Okay guys, let's be real here. The downfall of Gabby Hanna began the moment she started creating content. And at this point, the issue with her is not even the actual controversy she's involved in. She has problems with everyone. She is completely unable to apologize for her mistakes, and she has actually been just plain cruel to some people. If you ask me, Gabby has been pretty much digging her own grave since she started being a public figure. So let's take a look at how she did it and the controversy she's involved in at the moment. It's not a secret for anyone that Gabby has a problem with lots of creators. Trisha Paytas is probably the most obvious one. They began fighting in 2019 when Gabby told Jason Nash, who was Trisha's boyfriend at the time, that Trisha had an infectious disease. He told me he slept with her. I literally said, hey, this person I've heard has this incurable STD. And if you're going to continue sleeping with her, ask her about it. This is not okay, especially since she's only heard that Trisha had a disease but didn't have any proof or confirmation. You can't go through life spreading rumors about people's health. And the worst thing is, she's still acting as if what she has done was perfectly fine? It isn't. But okay, let's be honest. It's not a surprise that Gabby or anyone gets into drama with Trisha because they're also fairly problematic. The thing is, it's not only Trisha. Gabby has had problems with several other influencers, including Rice Gum, Rachel Oates, and Jelly Angelica Oles, Dominic DeAngelis, etc, etc. As if that wasn't enough, Gabby has proved that she can find beef with people who have been unproblematic most of their careers, until they run into Gabby. Let me explain. You may have already heard that Gabby has just been involved in drama with Joey Graceffa, a creator of the series Escape the Night, and Daniel Prita, a producer of the show. Both of them were Gabby's friends, and they were just hardworking creators trying to do amazing things with talented people. That's why Gabby was cast in their show. But sadly, Joey and Daniel soon realized that this was a huge mistake. Apparently, Gabby was a very difficult person to work with. She complained about everything, her clothing, her interview arrangements, but most of all, the food. In each meal, I need a protein, a carb, and a vegetable. I sent specific meals just so there was no like question, and I was promised that that would happen. Okay, I can understand that Gabby has dietary needs, okay? But on the set of a high-budget production with many people of cast and crew, the catering needs to be organized through online forms. Forms that Gabby received but failed to complete. So this was Gabby's mistake to begin with. But even then, there were times when Daniel personally left the set and went to Whole Foods with the sole purpose of getting food for Gabby. But that didn't prevent her from being hangry some other times and lashing out at people. So I blew up at the director. I blew up at probably Daniel and not Joey. I was very careful not to blow up at Joey. Can you see how she just says that naturally? As if that's an okay behavior to have in the set of your friend's production? That's not normal in my opinion. But what did Joey and Daniel think about it? Well, the situation was really unfair for them, so they decided to tell their side of the story. According to Joey and Daniel, they gave Gabby the food she asked for even though she didn't fill out the form for the food that she needed to. As for the wardrobe, Joey said that Gabby failed to attend two wardrobe fittings, which is probably why she had costume issues. As if this wasn't enough reasons to be mad at her, Joey says that Gabby's behavior on set was extremely rude and unprofessional. Meanwhile, you, who's also my friend, is making life on set a living hell by being disrespectful and rude and mean and foul to not only cast, but crew. Joey said that Gabby even went as far to actually curse at an assistant using words that are so awful, I can't even repeat them. So Gabby was not the most negatively impacted by the situation as she claims. And in fact, her attitude kind of ruined the filming experience for everyone else. Moving on, in the video she made bashing Escape the Night, Gabby also talked repeatedly about her ED and her ADHD, which of course are things that the producers needed to be aware of during the filming of the show. However, Gabby Gabby is trying to justify her attitude with her mental illness, which is pretty problematic. Joey also noticed that, and he was pretty straightforward when he addressed this in his video. Regardless of your mental health issues, this is not how you act, okay? And that is why we are not friends, Gabby. And that is why I don't like you. Blunt. But I think she needs to hear it. Not that she'll care, though. Anyway, in that same video addressing Escape the Night, Gabby admitted that she's been super demanding on set. She also said that she can be rude, and she kind of apologized, but then she 
also demanded an apology in return. Apology for what? I do think we need to like stop with this idea that like apologies have to be one way because we were both wrong. Now guys, are we surprised at this behavior from Gabby? Not really, because as illogical as it sounds, Gabby always expects an apology from the people she hurts. So this is not an isolated case. In fact, Gabby did the exact same to another person. And in this case, the situation was a hundred times more twisted. I'm talking about Jesse Smiles. Okay, so you guys probably know that Gabby and Jesse Smiles are in a public argument that has been going on for years. The thing that started the fight was that Jesse was really hurt that Gabby kept hanging out and interacting with Curtis Lepore, the guy who essayed her. This horrible incident happened to Jesse in 2014, but people just started talking a lot about it in 2019 after a series of tweets and DMs that were sent to Gabby surfaced. Since then, Gabby has been trying to turn herself into the victim of the situation, claiming that Jesse is trying to ruin her career. And guys, Gabby has brought up Jesse's essay time and time again, which is just so insensitive and inconsiderate on her part. Fast forward to June 4th, 2021. The situation was reignited after Gabby mentioned Jesse again in a BuzzFeed interview. She then felt the need to justify herself for speaking about her. I have a career in entertainment. I do press. I am allowed to talk about my life. This is something that has become a huge part of my story, much to my dismay. The issue here is that Gabby was not talking about her life, but about another person's trauma. And that's just inexcusable. Up until the moment that the article was published, Jessie had avoided responding to Gabby during the many times that she brought her up. The reason is simple. She doesn't want to keep making her essay a conversation and drama topic. But this time, she decided not to stay quiet anymore. And she released a call that the two of them had in the summer of 2020. And it was intense. During that infamous call, Gabby admitted that back when the essay happened, she actually agreed to listen to Curtis's side of the story. And not only that, she also promised that she would never criticize him publicly. And guys, this is exactly what's so terrible about Gabby. Not only did she agree to listen to the monster that did this to her ex-best friend, but she put his public image over what she did to Jesse. Even after all of this time, she had no problem publicly bashing Jesse, the survivor, over and over and over again. As it was to be expected, this obviously made Jesse super upset during the call, to the point where she was hyperventilating and crying. And can you guys guess what Gabby said about that? Well, after the call was released, Gabby went as far to say that Jesse was just crying because she wanted to cause an emotional reaction in the viewers. Jesse was looking for any moment that she possibly could so that she could get emotional on the call because she was filming it. Ugh, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's pretty obvious that Jesse was crying out of panic and desperation, not to manipulate the viewers or Gabby. And guys, if you thought this was the worst part of the call, you're wrong. In that call, Gabby actually said to Jesse that she wanted her to apologize publicly for the things she had said about her. Gabby also threatened her, saying that she wouldn't stop bringing up the essay and all the drama surrounding it until she got the apology from Jesse. This just goes beyond me. So just listen to Swoop explaining why this is so wrong. Like imagine telling an actual survivor that you're going to keep forcing them to relive their trauma until the actual survivor apologizes to you for the that you did. Can you believe the audacity? I literally can't understand how Gabby can do all of these things without even realizing how twisted they are. The craziest part for me is that she truly believes she's done nothing wrong. But guys, there's even more to this because Gabby is a bottomless pit of evil. Not only has she demanded an apology, but she has literally placed herself as the one who has been affected the most in this situation. Jesse is my Since 2015, I have been the victim of narcissistic blackmail, harassment, stalking, slander, smear campaigns, Gaslighting. I don't know what you guys think, but in my opinion, making a survivor relive her trauma and then blaming her for being your attacker is just a vile. Clearly, a lot of people who've watched Gabby's video agree as she's turned off the like to dislike ratio and the comment section. The saddest part of all of this is that Jessie is currently pregnant and this situation is taking a toll on her emotional well-being. She's not being able to enjoy her pregnancy, which is really unfortunate, especially as this is her rainbow baby. Guys, I've tried to
to understand Gabby's side of the story, but there's nothing that justifies her behavior to Jesse. There's nothing that Jesse could have ever done to Gabby or nothing that she could possibly do in her future that justifies what Gabby is doing to her. All of this brings us back to the real problem with Gabby Hanna, and it's pretty much that, honestly, she doesn't seem to care about anyone or anything but herself. She has lied, manipulated people, spread rumors, and has been horrible to others. All of this while she claims to be an advocate for mental health? Kind of hypocritical, isn't it? And to be honest, I don't see these problems ending anytime soon. I just hope Gabby eventually learns to put herself into other people's shoes and tries to think of how her actions make other people feel. Anyway, I love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this situation, so please let me know in the comments down below.